I would say yes. I don't even know what the new rules are, to be honest. I haven't. I guess they'll tell us in spring training. Pitch clock, shifts. I don't know what else is going, but, you know, we'll figure it out. I mean, I think there's definitely going to be a learning curve if, you know, I think about especially the pitch clock is probably the biggest change, unless there's something I don't know about. The bases being bigger. Bases, yeah. So, I mean, I think, yeah, there'll be a premium of having to learn how to deal with, with whatever new rules there are. And, um, I mean, yeah, there'll be that learning curve. Hopefully we can learn as much as we can in spring training. But, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some of it rolls into the regular season for, for all the teams. I think back to replay and, you know, how that was. We tried it in spring training, but, you know, not until maybe halfway through that first year was everyone really comfortable with how it's working. And Major League Baseball did a good job adapting and, and changing those rules. So I think they've said that as well, that, you know, if any of this stuff, you know, has unintended consequences, they'll, they'll look through that. And we'll just uh, we'll try to adapt and, and be ready to play. Well, I mean, number one, I was sad that Jeff was leaving. I mean, him and I had a really close relationship, too. He helped me so much. We would talk all the time and, and text and watch videos. So, uh, I mean, it seems like he's happy in his new role. And so that's, you know, I'm excited for him with that. But, yeah, I mean, once, once that happened, I was very happy. Turner was uh, staying on and going to be the head hitting coach. Uh, he's so, you know, so great. Um, he works with so many guys. He's a great communicator. He understands there's different ways to communicate. He does a great job with that. Um, and then just, you know, the continuity from last year, I think we did a pretty good job as an offense. We had a, a good combination of more veteran guys, some of which have retired and, and younger players that were their first time. And I think overall, most guys, you know, had some good years and, um, you know, to be able to, to keep that going and build on what we did would be really nice as an offense. How do you get better? There's a million different ways. I'm trying to find whatever it is. So, you know, I don't think there's like some wholesale, let me change everything, but just looking to get a little bit better, you know, around the edges, maybe get, you know, 1% better here, 1% better there. Um, learn from, from last year and previous years, you know, Example, you talk to the hitting coach and, you know, hey, this is what we did well. This is, you know, when I struggled, what could we have maybe done different now that we're taking a step away? You know, talk to our trainers and strength coaches, talk to the infield coaches, base running, and just, you know, try to get better, try to, you know, learn from players on our team or other players and just continue to find, you know, probably small ways to improve. And uh, hopefully I can do that. You're a normal guy, not motivated by awards, but the magnitude of winning the MVP and what that meant. That kind of hit you in the off season? Uh, probably not, to be <laughs> honest. I hate to say that. I mean, it was it was awesome. It was amazing. I'm so thankful for it. But it's not like it changed me, and it's not like if I wouldn't have won, my life would have, you know, been a disappointment. Or last year either. So, um, it was you know it was great. Like I said, I'm so thankful, and it was a great year. And but I've had other great years, and so I think that, you know, I'm always looking forward. I'm always looking for ways that I can improve and get better. And you know, we all start. You know, 0 for 0, every team 0 0. So, you know, it, we get pretty good at, at letting go of what happened in years past. And um, like I said, it was great and got to celebrate it with family and friends. But my focus, even before that and, and definitely after, has been preparing to, you know, play in this 2023 season. You know, well, you had a big tough decision to make this offseason. He said there were some not so subtle threats that if he dared to leave, yeah. <laughs> Did, what were those conversations like? I mean, you know how much he loves it here. Yeah, those threats didn't come from me. You know, I've, I've <laughs> <laughs> if he said they did, then there's some I don't remember. You know, you always it's just a weird game, and you never know what's going to happen. And I think just you always want what's best for your teammates. You got to care about them as people first. Of course, selfishly, I wanted him back, and glad that that's how it turned out. But if it wouldn't have turned out that way, you know, I just you want them to be happy. You want them to be in a good spot, and so. I've always taken the, you know, stance of not talk to guys about free agency or trades or any of that because, uh, you know, there's so many unknowns, there's things you don't know, whatever's going on in their life, and just try to take a stance. Of course, I'd love to play with him and, and happy we're going to, but, you know, first and foremost that, that he's going to be happy and, you know, he made the decision and it sounds like he is. Why should I play? Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I'll ask a different question that wasn't asked. Um, you and Nolan come from different organizations. Eight here, and 
like, I mean, get to know each other even better than we did. I know you're you know, mm -hmm. teammates, but called you as best friend. How much have you learned playing with him? How much have you enjoyed playing with him? And how much does it mean for you guys to, like, be here together on this thing, kind of chasing winning? Uh, it's amazing in, in every way possible. Uh, obviously, you know, one of my best friends, if not my best friend. But, you know, I think the way we think about baseball, we, you know, I think hopefully we can help each other. I know he helps me a ton. You know, we talk about the MVP award. I don't win that if he's not here from what I've learned from him the past two years and just playing with him on a, on a daily basis last year. He makes everyone around him better. Um, you know, I mean, when he's on defense, he makes great play. You're just like, I better not mess this up because uh, what he does is incredible. And, you know, he has a high standard for himself. And so we all want to, you know, live up to that. And, um, you know, we both, along with the other 24 guys and plus on our roster, you know, we want to win a championship. And I think when that's the mindset of all the players, that's a good place to be. And, and that's why last year the ending was so disappointing. But that's a good place. You don't want to be okay with losing. You don't want to be okay with coming up short of your goals. Um, it's part of the game. We know there's only one team that won. So 29 teams were probably disappointed. And uh, you know, I think the goal, like I said, is to just learn from that and, and move forward and try to find a way to get better individually and, and as a team and, and you know, try to bring a championship back here. You spent time last year with teammates who were really close friends for most of their career and teammates <clears> that you've heard have been part of this whole era. What did you get from watching what Albert and Yadi bring to a clubhouse or bring to not just setting expectations for a team, but yeah, I know Wayne was coming back this year, but I'm going to throw him in there. The thing that sticks out to me about those three was just they lead and they, they do it in different ways. It's all the goal was always the same be as best as they can, you know, to win a championship, bring a championship back here and be the best player they can be and help their teammates. But it's, it was done in different ways. You guys have seen their personalities as you've interacted with them, um, you've seen them on the field. So I think that gives you confidence that you don't have to do it one way. Of course, I tried to learn from each of them and, and still do, but um, there's not one secret to success. And so, um, you know, the thing that was in common was they were going to do everything they could to win every single day to make themselves better, to make their teammates better. Um, that's something, uh, you know, I'll never forget and we'll, we'll try to do myself as well. You think you're more fun being on the same time with different personalities. Yeah, I mean, I think it's good, but I think, you know, we're going to need everyone. It's not just about us. Yeah, I mean, but. As close as we are, we have different personalities, different strengths, different weaknesses, and that's why you know it's a team game. And there's other guys uh, on this team as well that are are going to lead and they're going to play well, and we're going to need to play well. So, um, it's one of the great things about baseball. Well, with those guys retiring, do you view your leadership role any differently now as a veteran in the clubhouse, or is it still kind of what it's always been for you? No, it's not too different. I was always trying to do everything I could, so. Uh, you know, in baseball, we're playing every day, and it's just about going out there and, and playing well and, and being there from your teammates. There's times to have conversations and stuff like that, but, um, you know, you're all, I was always trying to lead to the best of my ability. I can't be those guys, and um, but I tried to learn from them. I tried to learn from as many people as I could and just tried to do my job to the best of my ability. No one earlier mentioned that you not prep with the BCC in 17. It felt like you were doing a little better prep heading into the start of the season. What kind of is your perspective on that, and how does that shape you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely felt the same way, and I hope that happens again. I mean, I think the intensity of playing those games, they're playoff games, like, dare I say, World Series-type atmosphere games, definitely as you get into the single elimination. And so I think <clears throat> as a player to, to do that, when you went back and started the regular season, you were you were pretty locked in mentally and, and physically. And um, so I was – basically begging to be on the team again this year. I had such a great time last year, or six years ago, last time. Um, made some amazing friendships, and I think that's when Noah and I first started becoming better friends. But there's other guys on the team. Some are retired, some are still playing that, you know, I consider lifelong friends. So the experience was amazing and happy to do it again. To, to Derek's question about the clubhouse stuff earlier, have you thought about what it's going to be like back in Jupiter? Like you and Nolan and Adam, you mean 15 guys out of camp. Like, what's that camp going to look like when you're not there, all of you? 
you know, it'll be fine. You know, guys, <laughs> you know, we got to, we have a lot of, you know, you want your guys playing. I mean, if everyone's playing competitive games and, you know, the coaching staff will run spring training and, and they'll do it and, and we'll be there. There's at least three weeks until we have to leave and then we'll come back. There's at least another week and, you know, players will be coming back at different times, but I mean, overall, I think it'll be a great thing. Guys will get more opportunities when we're gone to play and to, to do some other things. And you know, all of us playing will get some opportunities to play in some, you know, very meaningful games. And we'll all come back together and be ready. Well, the NLCP have begged you. I was begging before that. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I think the first time I mentioned it was at the All-Star game. I saw somebody from the organization and like, hey, if I can play, I'd, I'd love to play. So that's that's how great of an experience it was for me last time. And, um, you know, probably thought it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but when I was playing well last year, I figured uh, I'd try to ask and make a push. Well, a lot of guys say you don't really know a guy until you're a teammate with him. You share in the locker room every day. What, what have you learned about Adam Wainwright that, that maybe you didn't know before becoming his teammate? Probably his competitiveness. He's as competitive as anyone I've ever been around. I have so much respect for him. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, we see him, he's kind of happy-go-lucky. and But on this start day, he's as competitive as anyone. Um, even if he gives up runs, he wants to. He never wants to come out of the game. He always, you know, wants to strike the next guy out, you know, win the game, do whatever he can. Back when we were – pitchers were hitting, he wanted to – thought he could come get a pinch hit. And uh, – you know, you love that. You love a guy that's that intense, that that's competitive, that wants to win that bad. It's it's not about him. It's about the team. Just all those qualities that I respect. You don't know that when you just face a guy and you're just trying to get a hit off of him. And you know, I noticed it very quickly and have a lot of appreciation and respect for that. Last year, do you think that he's ramped up even more? I don't know if he can. <laughs> that'd be a good question for him. If he can raise his game even more, that'd be incredible. Uh, I think just at the level that he's always done. Is uh, you know, he gives it his all every day, and I don't think we can ask anything more from him. All kind of a two parter, but both Nolan <clears> and Ali Marmol talked about how pitching is that's his success for his stuff. What are your thoughts on the pitching rotation, the competition associated with that? I mean, Nolan went so far to say that he thinks Lamar is going to have a pretty good year this year. So in the offseason, is there somebody you can put in the locker room that can maybe hit the fan with some breakout games? Hopefully, all of our guys. Hopefully, we're a lot. You know, we have a good mix of uh, youth and, and some veteran players. So I think there's a lot of opportunities out there. We saw, you know, guys like Donovan last year that didn't even make the team that had a huge impact and won a gold glove and was just, you know, I think Lars was up and down at the beginning and he was one of our better players in the second half. And obviously we hope he can, uh, you know, carry that forward in this year. We have so many talented players. So hopefully there'll be a lot of breakout players and players that played well will continue to play well. Yeah, I mean, I think you look at every team, pitching's the key to winning. I hate to say it, but if uh, but if you want to win the World Series, if you want to win your division, you got to have good pitching. And I think we got the potential with the players we have to do that. Hopefully, they'll stay healthy and perform, and we can, you know, as a group, all do our job and you know try to find a way to get in the playoffs and, and then win the whole thing. Well, you're so process oriented. <clears throat> when you look back at the way that the season ended personally, what was what do you look back on that process as compared to what yeah, of course. I mean, we in the moment, you're always doing everything you can. Um, there's no regrets of the way we did anything. Um, but unfortunately, the results weren't there, you know, especially in the playoffs. And uh, but then again, it's such a short time. You know, you get one break that goes your way and, and things can go differently. But, you know, you just have to deal with that and move forward. I don't think there was anything we would have done different. And that's... You know, it's just they beat us, and, and unfortunate from our point of view, but a great job by them. And hopefully, you know, we can give ourselves another opportunity this year and, and be able to come through. You, uh, when you talked to us at one of the MVP, you called it your best season. Is that something you felt through the season? Is that a feeling you had as that season going on, or is that a conclusion you came to in the trophy year when you look back at the stats? Uh, I mean, I felt like it was my best year before, you know, before, maybe at the end of the year. You're not really thinking about it. Yeah. I, mean, I thought 2021, honestly, was my best year when I look at, back on it. And um, and I, I said that. I mean, I think my goal after two years ago was to try to continue to do, make the changes that had kind of happened over the years before and kind of carry that into last year. And 
I was able to do a pretty good job of that. But you never know what's going to happen. You know, there's ups and downs throughout the year. I, I wasn't like thinking, oh, I, I got this or anything like that. You're just in the moment. But as you look back and you, you know the stats, I mean, you're not blind at the end of the year. And, you know, knowing everything that happened, I, you know, like I said, I thought that was my best year, regardless of how the voting would have turned out, any of the other awards. Um, so. You, you changed bats, obviously, but so you're not, you were looking to not stay complacent after this one. I mean, how do you kind of, like, you talk yourself off of that? I always am. So that's, I didn't have to shock myself. Just always, I'm talking to as many players as I can and coaches, like I said, sat down with, you know, Turner after the year, we talked about things that we can, you know, we did well and things that I thought maybe we could have done different and, and how to <clears throat> deal with those this year. I said, talk to the training staff, strength coaches, you know, still working with different trainers and, and all those types of things. And we'll continue to learn and, and try to get better. And it's just really small stuff around the edges. I mean, Hopefully it translates, but uh, I don't know if there, there's one huge thing that, you know, you can really do. And, and that's kind of been my mindset <clears throat> my whole career. Just try to get a little bit better each day, you know, work out, be smart about it, get stronger, faster, you know, work on your swing, try to make improvements. And if you do that, you know, over the course of the season, you got a chance to have a good year. Well, you, you, know, you, said you don't have tools back, but you added Wilson Contreras. <clears throat> what, what would it mean having him in that – Probably the five hole behind you and Nolan to offer protection to be another big bat in the lineup. Yeah, whatever he does, it's going to be great for us. We've been playing against him for a long time. He's a great player, a great catcher, um, and that was a great sign by us. And sound like he's pretty excited to be here. I haven't really talked to him, but from what I've heard, so that's a great place to be. And you know, we're all hungry to to win and to play well, and, and hopefully we can do that. Well, when you're evaluating your own performance after the season. Numbers that you're looking at, what, what are the things that you're doing to evaluate? I mean, yeah, I mean, you can take a look at the numbers, but I think just a feeling of how the year goes and understanding, man, I did this was a goal when I did that well, or I struggled with this. So I have some scientific formula. I just thought that was my best year. Um, you know, I had a couple good years in Arizona as well that I would kind of put up there, but I just felt like the way, especially these last two years for me, I just felt like those were. The best years I've had. Joining the other world is a bucket. I think the guy has the uh, but I think it's something that you care about. I think the other is the time you need to get to see. Um, they're all linked to the other in the title this time. Yeah, they have a great team. They've uh, played really well every time we've had it. A lot of talented players. Some of you that are over here in Major League Baseball and some that are still back in Japan. So it's all the teams are so talented. Japan always has a great team. It's a great challenge for anyone that goes up against them. And, you know, it would be great for uh, for the world to see all, all the great players playing. How about the uh, Shohei Otani? Yeah. He's, he's the best. Yeah, he's great. It's fun. It's been awesome having him over here in Major League Baseball with the Angels and what he brings to the game, the excitement, being able to do both. And um, it's just it's a great time for, for baseball in general. And, it's a great tournament. I hope it keeps growing. I hope maybe we can do it a little bit more often than every six years. And I hope there's even more, you know, eyes watching it. And uh, it's only been going on for a little bit. Not like, you know, Olympics or World Cup that have been going on for hundreds of years. But I hope every time it happens, it keeps growing and the fans know how great of a product it is. You might be tougher if you were on in the car. Uh, I mean, I haven't talked to him too much in the offseason, to be honest. But obviously, he's a great player. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be great to see him out there playing. Well, this offseason been any different? I think you say, how do you recruit for this? No, not at all. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you, know, it, you know, a couple people when you're around town, hey, congratulations. But, you know, it's no different than, hey, great season. It's just been a little bit different. And, uh, I mean, the fans and the people here in St. Louis and around the surrounding areas and really around the country and world are great. So we, we appreciate their support. We love it. They, you know, they come out, you know, there's so many people here just this weekend and uh, they come out to the games and, you know, there's high, the fans have high expectations and those are right in line with ours. We expect to, to you know, win the World Series. That's the goal. And, and they expect that out of us and it's a great place to be. Do you feel a different side this offseason by living here? 
<clears throat> no, I mean, I've always kind of stuck around a little bit. So, I mean, like I said, I, I love it here. It's a great, great place to be, great place for my family. Um, the people that, you know, live here, it's awesome. So I don't have a, a single bad thing to say. And, you know, I felt that way for a few years now.